Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, I'll show you how I painted Aryak Rockfist using some quick and easy techniques to a tabletop ready standard. In the previous video, I did an unboxing review of this fine cast model, but in this video, I'll take you step by step how I painted him to a tabletop ready standard. All the paints used in this video are listed in the description below and I'll also put some links where you can save 20% off the retail price. Here he is primed and ready to paint and for the primer I used the Citadel Mechanica Standard Grey Spray and then gave that a nice even coat all over and as I was painting quite a lot of models at the same time I glued him to a bottle top. Hey, let's start painting and the first step is with Agrax Earthshade and this is going to be one even coat all over the model. So I'm just going to cover everything here. I think I avoid the head but I cover the rest of the model with a nice coat and this is going to give us a base to bring out those shadows and then we can put all the layers over this later on. So one even coat all over and then making sure to get right in those crevices. Try and start and end the brush stroke where you want most of the paint to build up but I'm not putting loads on here, just a nice even coat. Then when that completely dried I took some layer paint, the rust grey and then I just put it on the brush and then I work it into some kitchen towel. I'm not dry brushing but I want to take off some of the paint and then I'm just doing like an overbrush all over the model. I'm avoiding the head if I can, not worrying if it does go on there because we're going to tidy that up later on. And I'm just trying to do mostly downward strokes and then that's going to keep some of that um, shade coming through. So we're going to get some of the darker areas more pronounced then and then cover up all the raised areas with a nice more generous coat of this rust grey. And so keep going all over the model and then once I've done that once I let it completely dry and then I go over it again but just picking out the main most raised areas that would get more highlight and there that's where I want most of the colour. Then I took some base wraith bone, waited till that rust grey completely dried and I started filling in the area of the face. I also went over the beard here and then it's just picking out all the areas where there's different bones and skulls like we can see here on the shoulder plate and then just all over the model there's some on the knee picking out these little rune stones and any fangs that are also hanging on the model. Moving on to some metal paints now with the base paint lead belcher and then so I work this into the vents at the back of the armour and then also picking out all the different areas that I want to have this silver metallic look. So picking out all the little bits here down by the boots and then in between the different parts on the leg. Any of these pipes that I want to be like a silvery colour later on, they'll get a nice coat. And then just picking out this uh, like tool he's got here because he's going to be like a blacksmith kind of thing. So he's got all the different tools on him to go with his hammer and anvil and the anvil at the top is getting a paint as well. Ajax got quite a lot of parts of him who are going to be lead belchers so just really take your time picking those out like these little pistons almost here on the armour and then the little studs around the feet so you can see it's got like the strap there also a little bit on the hammer here and then also on the shield so really picking out those areas on the shield there and so that's going to get one coat and I only do one coat of the lead belcher that's all it needs and then let that completely dry. Then I took some base paint Retributor armour and this is going to be for all the gold areas. So we've got the wolf head here, that's going to be a nice gold colour and that will contrast against the anvil which is silver. Also the wolf on the front of his chest plate here. He's got another one on the side there. Also going to pick out just this little bit at the base of the hammer. Also a little bit at the top of the hammer. So really again taking your time, picking all these parts out. On the shield I want to put some gold so this is going to be gold, silver and a frost effect that we'll do later on and then I thought I'd do gold all around the rim of the shield as well. The next stage is to take either a contrast black templar or basilicanum grey. This is up to you. I went for the black templar though and here I'm going to just go in all these areas in between the folds of the arm and look all over the arm you can see in the back behind the knee there. I'm just changing my brush so I can get in there a little bit easier. And then so yeah just picking out all those parts and working that painting giving the beard a good coat being careful not to go over the lips of the mouth too much or the nose but if i do make a mistake i tidy that back up with some wraith bone once that black had completely dried 
Then with that black, I just picked out the belt buckle. So this is going to get one coat. We'll do some yellow over that later. And also on the knee pad, we've got like a paw here or a claw of some kind. So I'm just picking up those raised areas. Then I took Contrast for Lupus Pink. This is such a great colour, one of my favourite contrast paints. And I've gone for the handle with one nice generous coat. There's quite a lot of surface area here with all the plaits and folds of the material. So I'm putting quite a bit on, but being careful not to go over the other areas. Also using that on one of the tubes or pipes here. So just to break up all that blue and silver a bit. Then it's back to the Black Templar again. And now I'm going to go over this shoulder plate. So I'm going to avoid the part that's going to be white. And so I'm really taking my time, not swamping this with paint at all, being quite careful and just blocking in all around that little emblem that you can see that we're going to go over in white. And there's like a little engraving all around it that really helps. Next, it's contrast snake bite leather. And this is just going to be for the little bit of material, like the little strap at the bottom of the hammer there. So just give that one coat all over and don't forget to go on the inside too. Now onto another base paint, Avalon Sunset. And this is the yellow that I'm going to use on the little emblem here of the paw on his belt buckle. So I'm going to give that one coat, being really careful just to pick out the most raised parts of it. So we've got that black behind it and this yellow is really going to pop now against that. So I've got quite an old brush, but it's got quite flat bristles and it makes it really handy for doing bits like this. Because I can almost just touch it on there and it gives it one nice coat. Then I go with some contrast Gilliman flesh, and this is going to be for the face. So first of all, I make sure it's nice and crisp and tidy if I made any mistakes earlier with the black. Put some in the mouth, then some on the head, and then try and start and end my brush strokes where I want most of the paint to pool and build up, and then push and pull that paint around so the raised areas don't have so much on it. So a little bit of faffing around until you're happy. Then it's Contrast Skeleton Horde. And this is going to go over all the areas of bone and skulls and fangs and rune stones that we painted earlier with that wraith bone. So one nice coat of this, and that's going to give us a really good bone effect. And this will work into all those little crevices and bring out all the texture in the model and all the little runes as well. Then I take some blood for the blood god. And I use this on all the little red jewels that are on him. So he's got one on his knee there. So I put one dot. This is like a gloss paint. So it's going to be quite shiny once it dries. He's also got one at the top there and one at the very top. So just again, take your time as you do this. Then Agoras Dunes contrast paint. This is going to go over all the gold areas. And this is going to make that gold paint with the Retributor armor that we did earlier a lot richer. And so it's also going to go in and bring out all the textures so it give us a little bit of shade this is almost like using the shade but it's also got a nice strong color to it then agrax earth shade is next and this is going to go over all the lead belcher and do the same thing that that agarus dunes has done for the gold this will do the same for the silver except it won't color it too much but bring out all those textures contrast space wolves gray next and i use this just to go over the panels that have runes in them and so i decided just to give them one coat all over and then that paint's going to work its way nicely into the engravings and really bring them out a lot more while not taking away from the color that we put on with that rust gray previously next i took some white 0.951 vallejo and i use this just to block in the wolf on that shoulder plate and so i'm taking my time here i've got a nice decent brush that's got a nice point to it and then just working that in really gently again using the little engraving that it's got around it as a guide so that helps it be quite neat so you don't have to be really super precise as long as you keep it within that line you're going to get a nice crisp finish to it and if you make a mistake just go back with that black and fill it in you might have to do a couple of coats to cover it up and then I use that white to go in amongst all the metal parts that I did on the shield earlier on. So just getting it in there. And this is going to be the frost effect later on. And we put some other colours over the top of this. But this is going to be the base for that frost look. I also go over the parts of the hammer that I haven't painted yet. And so the very chunky part of the top, that's going to be a frosty look too. Then I take a mix of contrast athematic blue and contrast medium three parts medium to one athematic blue and once that white had completely dried i went over it with one even coat over all the white areas so that's on the shield there and then a nice even coat on that hammer as well so go right underneath it get it in amongst it get all that texture coming out and then once that's completely dried i took a three part contrast medium to one part 
Talisar blue and then I just dot that on so I don't cover it with an even coat I just dot it on over that athematic blue mix we did earlier and then that's going to just give a bit more variety a bit more texture to our frozen ice effect I did the same on the hammer too then I took some white again this time a very vegan makeup brush which has got some super soft bristles this makes it perfect for dry brushing I just put some paint on the end of those bristles work that into some kitchen towel and then try and get most of that paint off and then I'll just test it on my hand to make sure I'm happy with how much is actually going to come off on the model and then I go quite gently at first so sometimes too much paint can come off when you do the dry brushing but when you're happy with how much is coming away from the bristles then you can be a bit rougher like I'm being here with the end of the hammer so I'm giving all that frosty look now a bit of dry brushing all the different areas of the model really go into town on those bone effects to whiten them up a bit but also every, basically every part of the model is getting a dry brush now and this adds the frosty look to it so I wanted my Space Wolf army to be all frosty looking and so like they're out in a blizzard and so it's going to affect every part of their armor the beard is going to be covered in some frost as well but especially the shield and these frost weapons I'm really going heavy on it or especially around the edge and covering up a lot of that blue that we did earlier and then just keep doing that all over the model until you're happy with the amount of frosted effect you've got. And there we go there's our Yak Rock Fist painted to a tabletop ready standard with some quick and easy methods and once I finished painting him I glued him to the base that I pre-made and if you'd like to see how that base is done then I'll link to that at the end of this video. But really happy how this has come out just doing one or two coats of paint the dry brushing really ties it all together so that's the key i think with these space wolves making them look frosty and so you can get away with a lot of like simple techniques by doing that dry brush at the end but i love this model so much character his uh, data sheet is fantastic really fun model to paint as were all the characters and here's some of the others i've done which i'll be doing paint videos and unboxing videos for so you'll see exactly how i painted all these using very similar methods some are different colors um, like Uric the Slayer that's a little bit different and there's some other components on the other models too that we'll cover in other videos if you like the look of these icy frozen bases then I've done a separate video showing you how to make those again really quick and easy just a couple of techniques a few stages and you get some real effective looking bases and I'll put a link to that at the end of this video if you'd like to see the unboxing review video of Ayak Rockfist, the fine cast model, I'll put a link to that at the end of the video too. And if you're interested in picking up the model yourself, I'll put a link to Element Games. And if you use the code I put down there, you'll get some extra crystals, which will save you some money on your next order. Ayak Rockfist is part of my Space Wolves 3000 point army that I built and painted in just 30 days. And I did a behind the scenes diary of how I did this, going through every stage from planning, building, painting, going some deep dives into the different models and what they could do. And I even built a large base, the fang, for them all to be displayed in. I'll put a link at the end of this video to part one so you can watch that series if that's something you're interested in. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it gave you some ideas how you might like to paint your Ayak Rockfist model to a tabletop ready standard. And I'd love to hear what you think about these methods. So let me know in the comment section below. And also, have you got Ayak in your army or which is your favorite character? Let me know. I'd love to hear what you think. But for now, thanks so much for watching. Please like if you like it. Subscribe for more videos like this. And don't forget to hit that notification bell to join me next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'd like to say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters who make these daily videos possible. And if you're interested in joining the community, it'd be awesome to see you there. And I'll put a link for that in the description down below.